Hi Mark Survivor, uh, my name's Simone and I just wanted to um, tell you about my success story and how I overcame ending things with the narcissist. Um, so basically my story started towards the end of 2018. I had just came out of an unpleasant dating experience um, with a guy, he, he was very manipulative, he blew hot and cold with me and I later discovered he was engaged to be married so that's when I ended the situation there. Um, from that experience I decided, I vowed that I was going to be single forever, I didn't want any um, love interest well, with men or with, um, I didn't want a relationship or I didn't want to date again. But I've always wanted to be become a mother. So um, I looked into sperm donation and um, I came across this website and it was um, for people who were interested in looking for sperm or egg donors, um, surrogates, um, anything to do with fertility really. So basically it's a website where you can, um, you create a profile that's similar to a dating format. So I had to upload photos and some background information about myself. And uh, I got quite a, a lot of responses and one of them came from the narcissist. His name was James and he approached me first saying, you know, volunteering to be a sperm donor, not just to be a sperm donor, but also to co-parent. Um, he was one of the few who said he wants to co-parent and play an active part in the child's life. And also he seemed ideal because he was quite local. Well, he lived in the neighbouring county to me and um, we were around the same age group. He had already fathered a child. That's not through sperm donation, but from a previous relationship. So that gave me reassurance that, you know, we can father children. And he was a homeowner, had a steady job and... He seems very keen um, to, you know, talk to me and he left his phone number and said, you know, reach out to him. So I text him um, with the contact details he gave me and I said, you know, thanks for reaching out and, you know, maybe we could have a chat. Um, he instantly phoned back um, after I left that message. He seemed very friendly, um, very full on as well, and was very keen to meet. And we eventually ended up meeting, I think probably a week later at my local pub. Um, and that's when the love bombing started. It was, as soon as he saw me, it was just constant compliments. Um, his body language was full on. He was putting his arms around me. He was giving me this weird flirtatious stare. And um, I think the whole pub could see because everyone kept looking at us. And the chemistry was very full on. And um, I felt overwhelmed. I'm not someone I don't, I shy away from attention. And he, I don't know, he, he just put me on this pedal stool and he wanted to know so much information about me and you know looking back I just completely dismissed or didn't notice all these red flags um, and then he admitted to me you know this is a last resort I didn't really want to do this um, I'd rather I definitely want to have a child or another child because he has one already um, but I would like to do this as a couple. And, um, you know, I said to him, I've had, I've just, you know, not that long ago, came out of a disastrous 
relationship situation and you know i'm not interested in dating or relationships i just want to pursue my desire to become a, a mum and um you know he kept you know trying to persuade me otherwise and i thought to myself well maybe i should try the conventional way just because i had one you know, previous bad experience, does it mean that, you know, this this could be how it's supposed to be? So I thought, okay, I'll give it a try. And I was under the impression he still wants to help me have a baby, but we'll do it as a couple. And um, I thought, oh, you know what, well, maybe the baby this way wouldn't have any awkward questions for me, like, where's my dad? And how comes I haven't got a dad? And he's just seemed really nice, too good to be true, to be honest. But after two weeks, um, within two weeks, the love bombing continued. Um, he was saying how he was in love with me. He wanted us to get married and we were going to have, you know, babies and, you know, we're going to move in together and talks about the areas, what areas were good for us to live in. And he was doing all these plans with me. Um, looking back at it now, I realised it was future faking. And um, when we, we, we naturally, um, we decided to obviously naturally try for a baby because we're supposed to be this couple. And, um, but I noticed that, you know, when we were in the bedroom, he would pull away and I kept asking, you know, why is he doing that? And he kept saying, it's too soon. And next month, we'll, we'll try next month. And that next month would never come. And so I decided to sit him down and say, look, I think it's best to go back to my, to our initial plan where, you know, you help me have a baby and, you know, maybe whilst I'm pregnant or after I've had the baby, if things are still great between us, let's, you know, develop a relationship. I'm just scared that we're going to be in this relationship, not try for a baby and whatever reason, things don't work out and I'm back to square one. And, um, I said, this is really important to me. I I never had any intention of being in a relationship with you or anyone. I just wanted to have a baby. And I'm just scared that, you know, things might change between us and I'm back to square one. At least if I have a baby and maybe later we develop a relationship. If things, if our relationship was to break down, Obviously, that would be, you know, unfortunate, but I'd still would have become a, a mum. And I believe that's when the devaluing stage started. Um, he was, you know, just saying, no, it w you know, it will happen. Just, you know, just not yet. Just give me another month. And, you know, as I said, this you know, next month came and it was the same situation. And I just said, you know, I just, I don't want to waste any time. I don't know. I can't predict the future. I don't know if we're going to last as a couple. I'm over 30 now. So I was 33 at the time, almost 34. And whilst I was still fertile enough, you know, I just wanted to have a baby and he the devaluing stage started and um he wouldn't the love bombing you know obviously came to an end he wouldn't message me constantly like he always did didn't phone me constantly as much as he did much as he did before um if i messaged him he wouldn't reply back until a few days later if I rang him, he wouldn't answer the phone or he wouldn't return my calls and I'd hear from him days later. And um, 
once uh, we were still physically we were still seeing each other so I came round to his house one evening and literally in front of me he's there on match.com talking to other women and I'm there and I confront him about it and he you know he had the audacity to deny the whole thing and I'm sorry at the um I just changed rooms and the camera sort of ran out of time <laughs> but yes yeah, so, as I was saying um he just denied um being on the dating site and there was just a few more days of him just blowing hot and cold and um I decided to just confront him um I was I rang him again I as usual I didn't get he didn't return my call he didn't um accept the call so I left a voice message just saying um I've had enough and I don't think we should bother anymore and I was I was trying to call his bluff I was hoping he would want to mend things and just reassure me but I, I never heard back from him and I think that was the discard the discard stage I um I believe I just got stonewalled he gave me the silent treatments and I realized that actually I wanted to work things out with him so I tried to call him and see if we could sort things out but again he was just ghosting me so after a couple of weeks I you know I got the hints I was heartbroken but I decided to move on and I was in search of another person who could help me another sperm donor and um, I came across a really nice reliable person um, he didn't take advantage of me and on the first attempt I fell pregnant and I made the silly mistake of messaging James to tell him the news and I think that was when the Hoover attempt started he rang me straight away kept saying I moved on too soon um, he still had feelings for me and just he wanted to meet up so I I, I then blocked his number when I realised I made a mistake getting back into contact with him um, he would ring multiple times on no caller ID because I blocked his number then when I wouldn't pick up he would um, leave messages on Facebook it got to the point where I had to um, call the police because of the harassment and even then he would still um, message me from like a different number and say that I was, I was crazy I was unhinged I was unstable I'm not sure how he got that came to that conclusion and it got to the point where I started questioning, am I the narcissist? You know, have I done something to make him treat me the way he he treated me? Um, so after that, I just changed my number. And so far, up until this day, I've, I've enjoyed my new baby, um, who is four weeks this week. I've taken this time to heal and yeah unfortunately it took me to get the police involved block his number and change my number just to get him out of my life so I'm completely no contact with him now and I'm just taking the time to heal never say never but I have no intention to pursue any relationships but if I do in the future I'm aware of the red flags and I never want to go through that experience again and you know I'm able to 
to differentiate between a healthy and an unhealthy relationship. I don't dislike James. I just pity him. Um, he's going. He's always going to be stuck in the rut. He can't. Um, he can't self evaluate. He can't look within. He can't look from within to find his own happiness. Um. Yeah, he can't live without narcissistic supply. He can't be a whole person. And he will just keep going round and round, repeating the same cycle. But that's not my problem. So my success story is that I've been able to get out of that toxic environment. Um, and I'm just enjoying my new baby and I'll be teaching him how to engage in healthy relationships. And I just want to end the video on the note that I appreciate all you've done for the Narc Surviving community. Um, I'm a dedicated subscri subscriber to your YouTube channel and I am definitely going to uh, get in contact with you for more coaching sessions. I've had one with you it was regarding the story briefly, but I'd like to do one um, where it's I'm able to go back in time from where I believe it all started, um, stemming from my childhood. Um, I do believe I have a narcissistic mother and I'd like to get into details about that. And I think that's prepared me or groomed me to attract narcissistic men um, as I've been growing up and entered adulthood. And I just want to understand that more. So I'll be in touch with coaching sessions about that. But in the meantime, I'm currently healing and just enjoying the new chapter in my life. And I want to thank you for all your support and help. Um, you're helping, you know, a wide, a wider community worldwide. Every everything you mention in your videos, I've experienced that, and I one hundred percent can relate. And yes, a big thank you, and I will continue to be one of your biggest fans and supporters. And just keep doing what you're doing and spreading that awareness. Unfortunately, narcissism is on the rise now, I think, due to social media. And um, yes, I just want to say a big, massive thank you. I'm happy for you to share this on the YouTube platform. I'm hoping others can relate to my story. I know my story is unique. But I'm hoping that um, some people can relate to the behavioural patterns. And yes, thank you again for helping me share my story. And yes, I'll be in contact soon. And thank you again for listening to my story. Uh, bye for now.